Good morning, everybody. Thank you for um, being with us today. Um, thank you for your, your, all your mornings that I can see um, listed up here. So good morning to back, uh, back to all of you. Um, it's good to have you with us today via Facebook Live. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody that took part in the survey that went out via the WhatsApp group. Um, and thank you for giving us that, that feedback. Um, and all of the things that you've fed back to us are going to be carefully considered. Um, especially before we resume our, our normal Sunday gatherings. And just an update on that. So we, we met this week as a, as a leadership team um, to discuss that and, and a number of actions came out of that. And so the things that we are doing and putting in place is first of all, we're preparing an action plan and a set of protocols um, for when we do resume um, our services. We, we have been in contact with, the, with our landlords, the, uh, St, uh, St Mark's, who run the, the, church, the, the hall there. And um, we've got a meet, we hopefully got a meeting set up next week so we can do a risk assessment um, and go through those things. And also we'll be having a, a trustee meeting just to consider everything and agree everything before we go back. Um, and so I just wanted to share that with you, just so you know, you know what's going on and what, and what our thinking is and, 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 and how... Um, how we're looking at things. Um, subject to all of those things, we, we hope to be gathering back again by the end of the month. So for the next week or so, we're still going to be doing via Facebook Live, um, but, but we're hoping for the end of the month. But of course, that's subject to how things progress and, and, and what happens um, in terms of, you know, how the disease progress and virus progresses so we will be sharing our plans and protocols prior to that so hopefully we'll be giving you enough information so that you can make decisions and what i want you to understand is that we're going to be doing everything in our power to make sure that we're all safe and so when they when those things do come out please 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 carefully consider them carefully consider yourself uh, we do acknowledge that not everybody will want to return um, straight away so there'll be no pressure from us to do so and we will continue to share via Facebook live um, so so you can be a part of our services and gatherings in some way second of all Paul's already mentioned it but after the talk today we're going to be doing a, um, a TFAN Black Lives Matter prayer reflection um, it's going to be via zoom but what we're going to be doing the participants will be on zoom and then it will be shared to our Facebook um, page. So after I've gone, I'll reappear and hopefully a load of other screens um, will reappear and you, you can join in that way. Um, please bear with us. This is the first time we, we're doing it that way. Um, so there might be some technical difficulties, but hopefully not. Um, and then um, I just want to share that at 2 p.m. there will also be a Pride event that's being led by the House of Rainbow. Details have been shared on our Facebook page, so please have a look at those if you want to participate in that. Okay, let us pray this morning. Dear God, we thank you for your goodness, for your grace, for your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness. We pray that you will speak to us, you will challenge us, Lord God, you will help us, Lord God. Give us words of comfort, give us words of peace, give us words of hope. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to direct your attention this morning to the book of Proverbs, chapter number 18, uh, yes, chapter number 18, verses 15 to 16. And the Revised Standard Version uh, reads this. It says, An intelligent mind acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. And man's gifts make room for him and brings him before great men. Um, the Message Version of the Bible reads this, it says, Wise men and women are always learning, always listening for fresh insights. A gift gets attention, uh, gets attention. it buys the attention of eminent people. And what I, what I want to um, question today, the question I want to ask today, is what have we learnt during this, this lockdown period? What have we learnt during this pandemic? What have we learnt during this crisis what have you learned about yourself about your life about how you deal with things about your faith about your wealth about what's going on in you and how you process things what are the things that you are going to take away from this i want to ask how your experience during the last 15 weeks is going to shape you um, going forward how are you going to grow and thrive going forward 
You know, as I, as I reflect over the last um, 15 weeks, our world has changed drastically, almost beyond recognition. Um, in the last 15 weeks, we have, been in, we have been forced to engage new ways of doing things, new working practices. We're all experts in Zoom, Teams, Skype, um, and, and, and a variety of other um, tools that we now have at our disposal. We have, we have been forced to engage in new schooling practices. We have been um, forced to engage new realities. And, and we've been forced to think of new and creative ways of connecting and engaging with each other and, and those that we, the, uh, the nearest and dearest to us. We've been forced to engage in, in new realities. And while some of these realities have been good for some people, some people are loving the lockdown period, some people are loving working from home. Um, for others, they've not been so positive, and for others, they've certainly not been, been welcomed. And so this, this, the last 15 weeks has been a mixed bag for different people. Um, but we have had to accept and adapt to things that we have had little or no control over. You've done well because you've adapted, you've done well, regardless of how well you feel you've done, you've done well, because you're engaging, you're reaching out. And as we now edge our way out of this, this lockdown period, I think there's gonna be more change ahead of us. I think there's more change to come. I, I think what we've experienced in the last 15 weeks is just the beginning. You know, as we come out of this lockdown, each of, one of us, We'll need to choose how fast we individually um, move forward. And, and, and whilst many of us will have a choice over this, many of us will not. You know, it's interesting to me as I listen to people, you know, saying, well, I'm not sure about this, that and the other. We, we, we're in a place of luxury if we have the ability to choose how we edge out of this lockdown. But a lot of people don't have that choice. Um, you know, whilst we... Um, those of us, and I say those of us because, again, we assume everybody has experienced this working from home. But no, everybody hasn't. While those of us who work in offices have been able to work from home. Over the coming weeks, we are, be, we are going to have to go back to some sense of, of, of normality. We are, we are going to be expected to go back to, to some sense of, of what we used to go back to. Now, how, what that will look like, who knows? And I'm sure it will be different for different people uh, and, and, and different companies. But you know, things will progress back to normal. But whilst they go back to normal, things will be different. You know, in September, schools, colleges, universities will go back to full attendance. Um, and we will need to navigate this. Us parents will need to, to, to navigate this. Teachers and, and, and lecturers will need to navigate this. Train drivers and tube drivers as bus drivers as public transport gets more and more um, used over the coming weeks. They will all need to navigate this. You know, we may need to navigate the idea uh, around the idea of local lockdowns. We don't know what's going to happen as this virus spreads. You know, we've seen schools go back partly. We've seen shops open. We saw the bars and the pubs and the restaurants open yesterday. And we don't quite know what, how this is going to impact the spreading of this virus. So, so we're going to need to navigate um, this idea of, of local lockdowns where there are spikes. You know, we, we're all going to have to get to grips with social distancing, but now in a different way, because outside is going to become a little bit more crowded, maybe a lot more crowded than it has been over the far, past 15 weeks. Change is coming. You know, one of the one of the changes that I think we're going to see over the coming weeks is is we're going to see how we have to deal with the economic challenges and the financial challenges of the country over the coming weeks. You know, um, it, it, we we the the impact of COVID nineteen on our economy is going to be drastic. It's going to be devastating. I think we're going to see um, unemployment rise to levels that we haven't seen since the 1980s or the 1990s. You know, already we're hearing about companies that have gone into bankruptcy. Uh, redundancies are being made left, right and centre. And now we know that government borrowing and national debt is surging to a level, level that will make 2008 look like small change. 
You know, all of this change, we're going to have to navigate. We're going to have to come to terms with. If we think the last 15 weeks has been difficult, well, the coming weeks and months is going to be, I think, just as difficult. And I've said all of that, and I don't want to depress you this morning. I don't want to um, uh, 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 leave you with uh, depressing thoughts. Um, but in the midst of all of that, I believe that we are called to thrive. I believe that we are called to live. I believe that we are called to grow. I believe that we are called to shine. I believe that we are called to become and to become more full of life, full of hope, full full of love, full of joy, full of peace, more and more and more full of those things. And our challenge is going to be that in the midst of all of that stuff going on, how are we going to thrive and in what ways are we going to thrive and what will thriving look like in each of our new realities? You know, we are going, we are called to live and I believe in the coming weeks and months and, and years maybe, we are going to have to live like we've never lived before. And so as we edge out of this lockdown, as we consider all of these different things that we, we have to consider, I want to challenge you today to think about thriving. I want to challenge you today to think about growing. I want to challenge whatever comes, whether it's good, bad or indifferent. Think about thriving. If you don't hear anything I, else I say today, please hear this word. Thrive. You must thrive. And, and when it comes to thriving, there are many parts of this puzzle. And I think we'll probably be looking at these over the coming weeks and months. And, 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 and there'll be many parts of how we navigate our, our way around our new realities and our, our new world. But the one thing I want to talk about today is I want to talk about what have you learned over the last 15 weeks and how is that going to help you thrive going forward? What are the good things that you have learned? What are the bad things that you have learned? What are the indifferent things that you have learned? What are the things that you've learned about you and how you handle things? And how are you going to use that to make you thrive? You know, the proverbial writer, he states that wise people are always learning, always looking, in, looking out for, and listening for fresh insights. The Revised Ver, uh, Standard Version calls them intelligent and a, a wise person. The King James Version calls them a prudent person. The New International calls, uh, Version calls them a discerning person. The Hebrew word describes someone who is perceptive and, uh, and observant. And I believe the proverbial writer is describing someone here who is a growing and thriving person. A growing and thriving person is looking to learn. A growing and thriving person is looking for new and fresh insights in order that they can continue to grow and to thrive. What have you learned? And what are you going to do with it? What have you learnt and how is that learning going to help you ease your way out of this lockdown? How is that learning going to help you navigate in the new reality that each and every one of us must face? What have you learnt and how is that learning go going to help you navigate what is coming before you? Um, I've, I've picked out four lessons that I want to share with you. And these are not the four lessons. There are loads of lessons. And I'm sure if we had a debrief after, after, after this, we would talk about some of the stuff that we, we've learned. But I want to pick out four things that I think we, we should have learned and hopefully are, are learning as we come out of this. The first thing I, I want to mention, uh, or the first lesson I think we have learned, is that regardless of how strong each of us think we are and we have all had to embrace our own sense of vulnerability that's our first lesson i think i want to highlight today our vulnerability i think we've all been exposed to a sense of how fragile we can be we have all been exposed to how powerless we have been um, and, and, and can be. And, and I'm not just talking in terms of the, the virus. You know, we, we're powerless in, in terms of the virus. Yes, there's stuff we can do. But, but also there's stuff that, you know, stuff happens. Uh, um, and, 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 but but I'm, I'm, I'm talking about 
all of the other stuff that we've had to deal with, the powerlessness we felt in terms of lockdown and how we've been able to interact with people. You know, one of the things that sticks out for me is the, the powerlessness that we had around at the end of Grandad's life and how we couldn't see him even though we wanted to at certain points and we had no control over it. There was nothing we could do about it and we had to ride ride the wave and just see where it took us you know we are all vulnerable and i think that's one of the lessons that we need to take away from this whether that vulnerability and that fragility is around our physical health whether it's around our mental well-being whether it's around our emotional state whether it's around our relationships whether it's economically and financially um, whether it's how we manage stress pressure and grief we have all had to experience vulnerability. We are all vulnerable. You know, I am somebody, and I would never describe myself as, as a fragile person. But, but over the last 15 weeks, I have been exposed to my own fragility, my own weakness, my own insecurities. And I've responded in certain ways to all of those uh, things. Some of us are still battling with the idea of fear. You know, we spoke about fear a lot over the previous weeks, but, but that idea of fear hasn't gone away. COVID-19 has been a stark reminder of how scared and afraid we can be deep down inside. And I think this lesson of vulnerability is, is, is an important one because, first of all, it teaches us not to take things for granted. You know, as we come out of it, there were a lot of things we took for granted in the, in the approach to this lockdown. But I want to know what things you are not going to take for granted when we do come out. You know, what relationships are we not going to take for granted? You know, um, what connections are we not going to take for granted? We've assumed that they'll always be there and they'll always be there when we want to access them. But they haven't been over the last 15 weeks. So I, I, think, I think vulnerability has taught us to, um, to not take things for granted and be thankful for the small mercies that each of us have. I think things, um, you know, things like our health, our families, things we have access to. That, that we have, an ac have ac had access to. Vulnerability teaches us how to face our worst fears and our worst nightmares head on, how to manage negative and sometimes toxic emotions. That's what vulnerability teaches us. Maybe it has taught us methods and, 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 and ways of managing things like our well-being, our emotions and our relationships. And I'm here to let you to know today that as we come out, we're going to need some of those lessons and we're going to need to continue to learn those lessons. Maybe um, this idea of vulnerability as, as, as is teaching us, I say is teaching us because I think we're all prone for panic, but maybe it's teaching us how not to panic, how to deal with our own panicking selves um, and, and how not to live in a heightened state of emotions. You know, maybe vulnerability or the lesson of vulnerability has helped you put things in place, routines in place that have helped you learn how to manage yourself, your emotions, your own mental well-being over the last 15 weeks. You know, some of the things that you have learned about yourself over the last 15 weeks and you've put in place to help yourself thrive over the last 15 weeks are going to be some of the same things that you need to put in place as we come out and some of the same things you need to put in place as we go forward. You know, um, one of the first things that we dealt with was faith over fear. And I don't think that's going anywhere. Even as our world changes, even as we consider all of those things that I mentioned earlier, we need to think about faith over fear. That's the first lesson. Our second lesson, um, and I hope we've all learned this lesson, is the lesson of resilience. I hope we have learned over the last few months how resilient we can be. How you are able to stretch and flex in spite of all the, the, the adapting and, and changes that you've had to mould yourself to. I hope you're beginning to realise that you, you are stronger and more capable than you realise. We have all had to adapt to change. And while some of, some of us may have struggled with some of these changes, we have made it work. You are a resilient so-and-so. And I want to encourage you just to continue to learn that lessons, lesson of resilience. 
You know, some of us and some of you may have experienced pressure and strain in terms of your relationships. You know, we have had to live with our nearest and dearest and spend a lot more time with our nearest and dearest um, than we've ever had to do in, 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 in probably our, our entire relationships or in the entire history of our, our relationships. And whilst there are many moments that, that I will cherish from this, this lockdown period, there have been some of the other kind. And our relationships have had to become resilient. Let me tell you something about thriving. Thriving takes resilience. Growth takes resilience. Change and adapting takes resilience. I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring for any of us. I don't have 2020 vision, it appears. But the one thing I do know is that if we can develop resilience, then we can be in a better place to handle it. I love what Paul tells the Romans, uh, tells the church in Rome. He says, we also glory in suffering because we know suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, character, hope. And hope does not put us to shame. It is resilience that I hope we have learned over the last 15 weeks. The third thing I hope we have learned over the last 15 weeks is I hope we have learned about our richness. I hope we have learned about what is important to us, what we consider to be richness. You know, um, I, I, I think, for me especially, I think the last 15 weeks have, have taught me an important lesson about what is important in life and what needs to be treasured in life. It has taught me the things that are truly valuable and truly matters. You know, when I, when I talk about richness, I'm not talking about money. I'm talking about real wealth because money isn't real wealth. You can be rich in money and poor in spirit and poor in a whole range of other stuff. You know, in fact, over the last 15 weeks, um, it has shown us some of the things that money can't buy. You know, um, and, and for some of us, we have learned what has really mattered because it has been taken away from us. We haven't had access to it. The lesson has been a painful one because something has been taken away and we've been denied the privilege and the right of something. But for other, others of us, we have learned what really matters because of our exposure and experience to it. And that experience being so much more intense than our normal experience. You know, one of the, one of the wonderful things I've enjoyed over the last 15 weeks, or, or not 15 weeks, but yes, over the last 15 weeks actually, is the amount of family time we have spent together. I have loved what we have done as a family. I've loved our walks, our cooking together, our creating, our making, our doing things that are different, our, our way of trying to break the day up and do something different or break, break the monotony up and do something slightly different. You know, since Marley went back to school in early June, I have loved the fact that I've been, to drop it, been able to drop him off most days at school and pick him up most days at school. That is something I will treasure and I know as he gets older, he won't want to walk down the street with his old man holding his hand, talking about uh, having small talk and small chats. Uh, but, but I will cherish those moments. And, and I really do hope that there are some things that don't go back to how they used to be. I really do hope that there are some things that won't change. But the thing is, if I don't want those things to change, I'm going to have to be deliberate about making sure those things happen week after week, day after day, time after time. I'm going to have to learn the lessons of this lockdown, the good things that have come out of this lockdown, and make sure that I put them into my routines and my, um, my timetables as we go forward and we come out of this lockdown. The fourth thing I want to just talk about what I believe we have learned over the past 15 weeks. I believe we have learned about inequality, and I believe that we have learned about injustice. You know, one of the comments we heard uh, when the virus first hit was that this virus was the great equaliser. How, how indiscriminate what it was. It reached up to the leaders of our, of our country and of our world who had to fight it in the same way as the common folk. And that we were all equal in terms of the virus. And, and that is true in a sense. 
However, what's emerged over the last 15 weeks is actually something quite different, that due to our social structures, actually people from BAME backgrounds and people from working class backgrounds are more likely to catch this disease and more likely to die from it. This disease has exposed the inequalities of our society. Yes, it's indiscriminate in terms of when someone catches it. But if you are from a working class background and the evidence shows that if you are from a BAME, black and, and uh, ethnic minority background, you are more likely to catch this disease um, and, 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 and more likely to die from it. And there are a range of reasons why that is true. Um, but one of the reasons it is true is that whilst many of our working practices have changed and people like me have been able to work from home and whilst others have been furloughed and, and had the government pay large pr proportions of their, their salaries, there are many people that have been working as normal over the last 15 weeks. And when I mean working as normal, they've been going out there day after day doing the things that, 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 that they were doing prior to COVID and prior to the lockdown. These are people who, who are, and these are people who are paid the lowest salaries. These are some of the poorest people of our society. These are people from main backgrounds, as I've just mentioned. These are people that have been on the front line and are on the front line and are exposed daily to this um, virus. These are people that are more likely to be uh, uh, to experience poverty. These are people that are more likely to have um, adverse health conditions. These are people more likely to, to be eating in unhealthy ways. Um, you know, the, the, and, and whilst we're sitting at home pontificating about whether this should open and whether that should open, there's a whole raft of our society that has not had that choice. They've had very little choice about what they do and how they do it because circumstances have dictated that they must do it. And, and to some regard, people like me and people like you have benefited. We have been served by these people that have been relentlessly working. These lower paid people, relentlessly working, that have been more exposed to this virus than you and I have been and probably ever will be. And so for me, one of the lessons that we must take out of this is the injustice that has come from this, the, in, uh, the inequality rather that has, that has come out of this, and the inequality that people have experienced. And the question I want to leave with us is what are we going to do about it? You know, one of the other things that I want to address, and I'm moving quickly because time is getting away with me, but whilst for many of us working at home has been an okay experience, this has not been true for everybody, particularly women and children. Home has not been a safe place for these pe people. Reports of domestic violence have surged and the UN has described it as a shadow pandemic. You know, for others, being locked down and being isolated has not been a healthy space for them. And the consequence has, has been an increase in, in mental illness. You know, personally, I think the cost of, of, of lockdown in terms of human lives could be as significant as the cost of COVID or itself. And already the media has been talking about a mental health crisis. And already we're talking about the education gap between the richest and the poorest going back 10 years over schools being shut down. And I think there are things that we haven't even yet began to, cons began to consider that are going to mer emerge as we come out of this lockdown. And whilst this lockdown has been okay for me and made sense for me, there are loads of people that it's not been okay for and it's not um, a bit made sense to. And the lesson that we are going to have to learn about, in 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 about inequality and also injustice will be a hard one. Because this is not just about us thinking about ourselves. This is not just us about thinking about our own safety. But we need to think about how we help and serve others. Especially those who don't work in the areas and fields. Uh, uh, um, especially those rather who work in the areas and fields 
that, that, that serve groups of people that have been affected. Some of the work that Maureen, Lisa, Priscilla, Didi, and others of us, of us do. Um, you, you know, there, it's going to be a challenge for us because I think things are going to emerge that are going to challenge us about how we serve and help these people. The lesson, this lesson will challenge us on, 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 on our need to thrive in order that we can help other people thrive. There are people depending on some of the stuff that you do in order for their healing and in order for their, uh, their ability to thrive. You know, this lesson as we come out of lockdown will hit us as a church about how we can support these vulnerable groups and projects. And, and you know, I, we haven't talked about giving over the last 15 weeks, but I think we're going to be challenged to give more in order that as a church we can support vulnerable groups and, vul and projects for vulnerable people. As we come out of a lockdown, there will be a need for us to gather uh, it, uh, and, and be a safe space that people that haven't had safe spaces can come to and be a part of that. And as we come out of lockdown, there will be a need for us to think about how we can serve the vulnerable in our circles and, and, uh, of influence and how we can serve the vulnerable in our communities. And, and listen to me, that will make us vulnerable in the process. And that will be a challenge, but we're going to have to face up to that challenge. And so as I close down today my talk, I want to challenge you to think about what you've learned over the last 15 weeks. And as we come out the other side, I want to challenge you. I want you to take some time to, to think about what you're going to take with you um, for your own benefit and for the benefit of others. And I, I know coming out of lockdown is going to be scary for some people. Um, and, and, and some of the people that you're connected with, it's going to be scary. And you're going to be worried about some of the people that, 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 that you are connected with. But I want you to think about all the stuff that you've learned over the last 15 weeks. I want you to think about your resilience. I want you to think about faith over fear. I want you to think about all of the things that you've done to help your anxiety and help you put things in place. And I want you to continue to thrive. In fact, I don't just want you to continue to thrive. I command you to thrive. I command you to strive forward and shine in, in, in this new reality and shine in the way that God is calling you to shine. God bless you this morning. Have a great afternoon. Please, please, please join us as I log off. And in five minutes, hopefully I will log back on and we'll be going into our next session of what we're doing today. Have a great afternoon. Love to you all. Amen.